Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the brand new Pan-Asian Tier 9 Premium Battleship, the Sun Yat-Sen import to review for you guys today. As always, a massive shout-out goes to the channel's Patreons. I am not a CC, nor supported by, nor affiliated with Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. Which means I do not get these premium ships supplied to me for these reviews. That is made possible by the channel's Patreons. The generous donations from these supporters make these reviews and all ship reviews on this channel possible. If you'd like to support the channel, besides just, of course, watching the streams and videos, Patreon is the best place to do so. Link to that is in the description down below. So the Sun Yat Sen Tier 9 Premium Pan Asian Battleship, technically Chinese Battleship, well, technically uh, People's Republic of China Battleship, as you see by the flag right there. So, yeah, this is a Savesky Soyuz with a different main battery gun layout, essentially. I think there might be a couple other changes here and there. We'll take a look at that as we go through it. But instead of having nine 16 inch guns, she has six 457 millimeter 18 inch guns. So, not given the ability to overmatch 32, because of course they're not 460s, but she can overmatch 30 millimeter, which there's quite a few 30 millimeter cruisers at higher tier nowadays. So, we're going to go ahead, look at her, get her stats and features, and then we want to pop into a gameplay review of her later on in the video. Modeling guys in our department, of course, have done an outstanding job as always. Lots of small details on the ship. Cool little helipad back here. You know, again, this is obviously supposed to be a post-war 50s era battleship. Again, it, it, it was just a Soyuz's hull, but of course, you know, there's a lot of small changes here and there, and those changes are very much appreciated. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at her stats and features, shall we? Alright, so... Oh, whoops, let me hide that away. I was checking out something with the guns beforehand, which is very surprising. It's very interesting what they did with the guns on this ship, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, shall we, ladies and gents? So she costs 19,000 dubs. You can find her in the armory right now. I'm sure she's probably in the premium shop, too. Should be about the same, of course, as other uh, battleships. Oh, is it not? Oh, it's not in featured, really? Oh, there it is. Yep, so you can get the pack with the 10-point uh, commander. And what else do you get in here? 10-point commander, a bunch of combat flags, some economic bo uh, bonuses for $141. It's kind of pricey. Yep, ship it shelf, $77. Normal price of a Tier 9 premium ship. Why would you pay so much for a Tier 9 premium ship? Because these guys' economy is kind of cracked. Um, they are very good. Granted, there are quite a few coal ships that you can get for free that have this economy as well. But, of course... To some people, that is worth paying outright for. Uh, so speaking of her economic bonuses, you do, of course, get the permanent bonus, 10% to credits, 100% to each of the three types of ship XP. Uh, this is her permanent camo, by the way. I double-checked that, too. I, I don't know. Like, since since the um, economic rework, the camos just aren't that inspired anymore. I mean, take a look at the Rosaya, and then... The Soyuz, you know, got, got, got some more camo on there, and um, I get it. You know, this is a post-war battleship. Radar is a thing. Camo's not that big of a deal, but like you know, we could have spiced it up a little bit, right? You know. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at her armor. So she has a 32 millimeter bow. She has a 220 millimeter cheek plate. And then her cheek right here is 420 millimeters as well. That's where the magazines are at. Uh, 390 millimeters, 390 millimeters back there. And main belt's 375. Upper belt's 375 as well. Uh, upper upper belt is 60. Well, actually, this is the upper belt. This is the main belt. Upper belt is 60. 375, 375. Uh, 375 around here around the bar bets at the rear. 180 millimeter plating there. That's probably where you can get some nice juicy chunks at. Then 32 millimeter plating for the stern. Stern deck is 32. Main deck is 60. That's nice and thick. And let's take a look at that citadel. Again, I'm pretty sure it is same as the <clears throat> same as the 
Soyuz, so it is above the water and exposed, and for comparison, yep, same as the Soyuz. You know, people like to complain that these Soviet battleships are like nigh on citadelable. Catch them at their sides. Y you will hit them, and it will hurt. What does help out is that, of course, you have that torpedo protection there, so you get this kind of spaced armored effect. So, you know, from angles and stuff, it really won't bite, but if you catch them flat like that, oh, they're, they're going to fill it. Trust me. They're going to fill it real good. So, it, it is a good armor scheme. You know, you sit bow in, tank for days, looks like we do what you do with the Soyuz, and you'll be fine. Now the guns, this is where it gets really interesting. So again, six 18-inch guns, 457mm guns. They do have a 26-second reload time, which is obviously very nice. However, it is only six guns, so you gotta think, 26 seconds, is it really that nice with only six guns? Yeah, 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 it, it, it's, it's, I'd say it's good it's not fantastic it it's good it's really going to depend upon how these guns perform for me supposedly they do have a high level of accuracy at least that's what it says in the armory but again we'll find out when any time at 30 seconds that is good maximum dispersion of 209 meters compare that to the soyuz which has the same range of 245 that is better and 209 is generally quite good at that range and i would hope it would be with six guns and again of course the ship is completely stocked no commander skills nor modules have been put on it yet that's my discord not yours thought i muted that all right so 19.2 kilometer range again same as the soyuz i don't know if i'll be able to slot the range module none of the uh soviet battleships can and since this is based on a soviet battleship i'm not sure haven't checked just yet we'll find out together Alright, so the HE maximum damage of 6,500, 45% chance of causing a fire per shell, 76 millimeters a pin and 800 meters a second initial velocity. AP maximum damage of 13,000 and initial velocity of 800 meters a second. You, you might catch something there. These 18 inch shells maximum alpha with the AP is 13,000. The soy uses 16 inch shells, 406 millimeter shells, Maximum damage is 13,250. That's right. The Chinese 18-inch guns do less damage than the Soviet 16-inch guns. So let, let me throw in some other nations' uh, Tier 9 BBs here. Like, let's take a look at the Georgia. Now, granted, I believe the Georgia does have the Mark 8 AP. Does it not? Uh, type B. But either way, 15,750 maximum damage. Let's throw in... Well, actually, let's take a look at the Thunder. I, I know it's tier 10, but, you know, still 18-inch guns. Da, 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 da. The Thunderer clocks in at 14,900. Oof. And then the Vermont, which has 12 of these guys on it, I get 15,750. So, yeah, I, I believe this is the lowest AP Alpha out of the 18-inch battleships. That's, um, hmm. Yeah. Now, granted, if it's accurate, and we're putting, you know, darn near four shells on target every salvo, okay, I can see that. But, um, that remains to be seen. Uh, secondary, she has 12 of these 152mm secondaries, 5.5 second reload time, 7 kilometer max range, 2200 maximum HE damage, 12% uh, fire chance, and 30 millimeters of HE pin. Man, if they gave these guys some more range, you could maybe, maybe build into them, but nah, not in my opinion at least. Uh, she gets two charges of the airstrikes for ASW duties. AA, this is nothing. She was quoted as having high AA in the armory. Like, I I'm not kidding. The A rating is 73, which is quite bad. For tier uh, tier nine, but it says she has good AA. It's probably because she has DFA according to this, but nah, fam, a, a A rating of seventy three at tier nine is not good AA. <laughs> okay, game. Okay, game. So you do get sixteen of these fifty seven millimeter guns, and then you get four of the quad mounted uh, fifty seven millimeter guns, and then the twelve. One for the twos are dual purpose. Hmm. Maneuverability, 28 knots top speed, 950 meter turning circle radius, and 14.9 second rotor shift time. Sounds about Soviet. Concealment, 16.7 kilometers. Not very good. 
Uh, let's see, the Soyuz, I do believe the module is equipped, 14.6, that sounds about right once you throw the module on there. Yeah. Okay, so equipment. Okay, she does have the normal damage con. She gets a heal for 44 HP per second for 28 seconds, reloads in 80 seconds, get four charge of that base, and DFAA. Which, again, I'm sure when DFA going, the A is actually quite decent. But the rest of the time, I just wonder, what, is, what does Soyuz have for AA? 72. <laughs> it's got one more a better A rating than the Soyuz. Okay, that's my Discord again. Good God, Discord. What does the streaming mode not do anything anymore? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and throw a Commander module build on her. And I'll meet you guys right back here. Alright guys, something I forgot to go over was her HP. She has 80,900, which is a whopping 8,000-ish less than... These still years, I think it's like 7,000 and 7,800 actually. That's a big hit to her HP, which um, it got me thinking about it when I saw the damage. I'm like, oh man, it has a normal damage con instead of the uh, quick cooldown damage cons. And then sure enough, that's why it has 7,000 less HP than the Sylvester Soyuz, which I mean, it's still on the higher side for um, battleship HP because, you know, like Wujing, 74,000. Most battleships are around the upper 70s, lower 30s, so she she's around the right spot, understandably, again, since she doesn't get the quick cooldown. All right, so my build for the Sun Yat-sen. So I went with the normal tank build. I mean, it's a Savesky Soyuz hull, great tank, great armor, so why not build into it? Permanent maintenance, which is, gives us a 30% reduction to the modules becoming incapacitated. And with grease the gears, because, you know, why not the turrets turn so fast to make them a little bit better in case in a brawling situation they'll be right there f with us then I went with a driven rush because of course if you're losing HP it's nice to get a buff to your reload time out of it you get 0.2% boost to your HP I'm sorry to your reload time for every 1% of HP lost then based of survivability to reduce our fire flooding and module restoration time by 15% emergency repair expert to get that extra charge of our heal and a 10% boost to our repair party and damage con action time. And then a concealment expert to get our concealment down by 10%. And then fire prevention expert to reduce the chance of fires getting started on us by 10%. And a reduction in the number of maximum fires by 1. So no longer we 4 fires, just 3. For our modules, I went with main armaments mod 1. This reduces the chance of the main guns becoming incapacitated by 20%. Same with the torpedo tubes, which don't exist on this ship. <laughs> but it improves the main battery survivability by 50% and main battery repair time reduction by 20%, which is very nice if they do get knocked out. Uh, damage con because fires suck, and this reduces the chance of us catching on fire by 5% and flooding by 3%. Aiming Systems Mod 1 to get a 7% boost to our... Uh, dispersion on our main battery shells. Damage con mod 2 because fire suck. This gives us another 50% boost to the fire and flooding recovery time. A zone expert to give us another 10% boost to our ship's detectability. And you can slot the range module on here, um, which will give us over 20 kilometers of range. But, I mean, a 12% boost to, re to the reload time, I mean, you know, that that's, that's, that's more stuff going down range. If I do feel like I need the range mod, I will throw it on here, but I'd like to give this a, a shot first. Then, of course, all the corresponding flags have been equipped as well. So now the guns reload in 22 seconds, much better than the 26 seconds we had beforehand. And the maximum dispersion is under 200 now. It's 194 meters, which sounds very nice. And maneuverability, we now go 29.4 knots with the speed flag, so almost 30 there. Concealment's now down to 13.5, which is actually pretty good. I, I think it's odd that it says in the description that it has terrible concealment, but like, I mean, like 13.5 with a build, that's not bad for a tier 9. You know, 12.5 is getting into like the kind of ridiculous range of some of the British battleships, but 13.5 isn't bad. So I just find that odd, really. So, yeah. But we'll see, we'll see. So I think with that 13.5 kilometer concealment and the 19 kilometer range, we might be able to make some stuff happen. But I mean, hey, we'll find out in battle, which is where I'm going, and you'll meet me there for a voiceover review. Hey guys, voiceover Mountbatten here, and whoa, 
Oh boy, the last couple of hours with Sun Yat-sen have been something. Um, yeah. So, what they did here is admittedly pretty interesting. Giving 18-inch guns lower alpha than 16-inch guns at tier 9. So essentially what you have is 16-inch guns that can overmatch 30 millimeters of armor. You can look at it that way, you know. Kind of makes it, I don't know, better, but it's a different way to look at it. Because these don't really feel like 18-inch guns, except when, of course, you can overmatch 30 millim millimeters of armor on, you know, those higher tier heavy cruisers and the like. So, Sun Yat-sen unfortunately suffers from what I've heard called dual gun syndrome, where because the battleship has two guns per turret, it feels like the shells kind of fly all, all over the place when they really shouldn't, especially in ships like this that only have six guns. So as a battleship player, someone who plays mostly battleships, well, has played mostly battleships, I'm catching up now with my cruiser games, um, when you have ships like this that have a very small number of guns, it hurts so much when just one shell misses. Because it's not like uh, most other tier 9 battleships that have, you know, around 8 or 9 guns. You only have 6. So those battleships can kind of make up for their crappy dispersion by, of course, throwing a lot of shells at the wall. Now, does Sun Yat-sen have crappy dispersion? Um, it appears to be whatever mood the gunners are in. With my games in the Sun Yat-sen, when I first started, my first couple of games, I was like, man, this ship actually does have pretty good accurate dispersion. It seemed to be pretty consistent, but as the night went on, wow. <laughs> wow. And the game in the background right now, I'm not sure what part I'm starting at because I'm gonna not, not, not sure how long I'm going to go on in the review section. The Sun Yat-sen decided that every time, apparently, that I was firing at the Kronstadt, it was going to revert to somewhere along the lines of Bismarck Dispersion. Which was, of course, quite terrible. And then, you can see, you know, every now and then, the, the, the roll of the die went well, and I got some decent salvos out of the ship. And this is a ship that, when I started off the night, I was, like, railing DDs at, like, 12, 13 kilometers with these guns, with, you know, four out of six shells hitting. Which is why, again, in my first game, I was like, oh, man, okay, maybe we do have something here. You know, the low alpha is made up for by the... Uh, quick reload time with the module and the good accuracy of the guns. If that's what they were trying to go for here, I thought in the, my first couple of matches in the Sun Yet, so I was like, oh, okay, I see how this is going to work. But no, that accuracy does not stick along. Now, one really important factor, especially when it comes to battleships, is Sigma. And Sigma isn't a characteristic or a stat that's shown in ports, you usually have to go to an alternative website like the wiki or go back through the dev blogs or fitting tool to find out what the sigma for a ship is. Sigma is the value that determines essentially how the shells are going to leave the barrels of the gun. It's going to determine the pattern that it's going to leave the barrels in. Dispersion is then the number that determines how far those shells can fly apart from each other once they've left the gun tubes. So for like the Sun Yat Sin with the artillery plotting room module that I have on my Sun Yat Sin, the maximum dispersion is 194 meters. So once the shells leave the guns, they can, you know, fly away from each other at for precisely 192 meters. No more than that. Now, in the case of the Sun Yat Sin, its sigma is 1.9, which is pretty good for a battleship that has nine guns or eight guns but one that has six guns that's okay-ish for reference the yami has 2.1 sigma which is the tier 10 japanese battleship with nine 18 inch guns that can overmatch 32 millimeters of armor so yeah yeah and the reason I'm spending so much time talking about the guns is because this is my biggest sticking point about the Sun Yat. So there's a couple more things that we will get into when we go through the stats, but this is my main impression of the ship, is that the guns aren't consistent enough for what you have. If you're going to give 18-inch guns the 
well, I'm n not the alpha, but lower alpha <laughs> than 16-inch guns, than the 16-inch guns that, that the ship is based off of, I should say, it's got to be something a little bit more than, yeah, they're pretty accurate and you have good RPM rounds per minute. Because it does have, you know, a nice reload time, 22 seconds, with the module equipped. And eventually you can use that to your advantage. Once the game develops to the point where you can push it, I do find the Sun Yat-Sen is pretty good. Again, what you'll see in the background footage here will demonstrate that quite well. The issue is, throughout the night, it felt like every time I was about to hit my stride in the Sun Yat-Sen, the game ended. Like, it's like, okay, we're fine pushing into like 13, 14 kilometers. This is, you know, sweet zone for the Sun Yat-Sen. The accuracy is, you know, definitely more than workable here. The guns reload in 22 seconds. Actually, by that point, it's probably down to like 20 or even 19 seconds because, you know, I've taken damage by that point and adrenaline rush is kicking in full stride. It's like, all right, let's go ahead and kick some teeth in and the game's over. <laughs> because as we all know, higher tier games... They either end in five minutes, or you're stuck at 20 kilometers for most of the match. And by the time you can push in to 12, 13 kilometers, either everyone's dead and you're chasing down the CV or one of the two last remaining DDs, or, again, the enemy team just collapses and there goes the game. So, that happened a lot. A lot, a lot. The match you're watching, again, was one of the few matches that I actually got to get in there and do a little bit of something. And you can see what happens when I can just get in and do a little bit of something. It's quite good. So I would imagine, if you can get games like this, it is quite good. But the reality of higher tiers sets in, and yeah. Now, I could probably take this thing into Airship Escort and do quite good. Again, the ship's armor, it's the same as the Soyuz. Anyone that's played Soviet large ships, like, you know, the, the Stalingrad, Moscow, the Kremlin, the Soyuz, or the Vladivostok, you guys know how to play it. Stay in angled. Bounce shells for days. Use your tankiness to your uh, to, to, to your benefit, and you do great. It, it, again, it's a lot of the same here, except... Add, well, I can't really say a slightly closer range because the Soviet battleships are already slightly, uh, not slightly close range ships. They are close range ships and they're very good at doing that. Um, it's more of the same here. You just have these 18 inch guns that can overmatch 30 millimeters of armor, but for some reason have less alpha than these their 16 inch counterparts. So it, 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 it's, it's quite frustrating, honestly. Because, again, so many times throughout the night, right when I was like, okay, cool, the game's developing to the point where I can get in there and do something, the match ended. Now, is that the ship's fault? Well, uh, not really. It's not the ship's fault the meta is what it is, but the meta is what it is. With that little eight minute talk out the way at the start, let's go ahead and run through the stats to talk about the rest of the ship. Uh, so, armor, like I said, it's it's, it's the Soyuz's uses armor. It, it's, you know, nice armor. If you know what you're doing with it, you know what you're doing with it, and you'll be fine. Again, stay angled into the enemy, try to bait them into shooting your angled main battery belt, and you'll be bouncing shells for days. Don't get caught broadside, you will get vibe checked. Uh, survivability, the 8000 HP, of course, if you go straight from playing the Soyuz to this, you'll notice it, but again, you have unlimited damage con with the Sun Yat-Sen, and that's one of the main balancing points of the Soviet battleships. Yes, they have huge HP pulls, but they have a limited number of damage cons, and in today's HE spammy world and submarine world and super CV world, damage con is something you need plenty of right now, so I'd say it's, it's actually pretty dang tough. Armor is very good. Again, if you know how to play Soviet battleships, you do quite fine there. She does have a 35% torpedo damage reduction. I forgot to mention that. And the port sections, again, same as the Soyuz. Okay, um, artillery, I just spent eight minutes talking about that. So, yeah, you guys know my thoughts on that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the gunning angles. Uh, they are pretty decent. You can stay decently well angled to most things uh, when you need to bring all your six guns into the fight, which obviously you will need to because you only have six guns. Uh, when you when you face something like a Yami or a Satsuma or one of the 18-inch uh, and above battleships, you do have to angle, of course, quite a bit steeper, so that does get that 
third turn out of the fight and now you're down to four turrets i'm sorry four guns which does absolutely suck but that is what it is um aa yeah dfaa on it's of course fine dfaa off cbs don't care about your aa but again that's not a sun yet sun thing that's just a fact of <laughs> aa thing just how cvs work nowadays a uh, maneuverability uh, again it's it's the soyuz it's a it's a big old boat <laughs> big old boat that takes a second to turn you have a huge turning circle your rudder takes 14 seconds to get there again no surprises there uh, again you, you played soviet ships you know what to expect here uh concealment honestly i do find a little odd that they say it has uh terrible concealment when 13.5 kilometers is is pretty decent i was able to use that to get into closer range in some matches obviously when there's no cvs or submarines involved that's a lot more workable but when there are cvs and submarines involved then of course you're gonna have issues with that so yeah it's it, it's workable but again you're listening to a guy that has like i think over 2,000 battles in gk if you include like uh ranked and um yeah if you if you include ranked and other modes and such like the uh the, 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 the dirigible derby man i really got stuck on that on like the dirigible derby and the um the uh what was the other mode the um i can't it can't it, it's slipping my mind right now it's not clan battles it was the one of the other temporary modes that we had uh for some oh a super ship battles duh yeah if you include all that I think I'm getting close to 2,000 battles in GK with a full secondary build. But yeah, I mean, like, 13.5 kilometers, even in comparison to other Tier 9 battleships, that's really not that bad. So I, I do think that's weird that it says it has terrible concealment, but yeah, it's okay. Alright, overall, with the Sun Yat Sen, considering right now uh, this is in the armory for dubs and cash and not coal, I gotta give this thing a 6 out of 10. It has taste of greatness after you get off the, um, out of a battle when you can't get in close when you have the game that lasts that long you make it there and most of your health is intact yeah it does feel good but the thing is it just doesn't happen all that much at higher tier and while airship escort is potentially coming to random battles i think that will of course be a mode that favors close in ships as, as it is favoring close in ships right now once that gets there sure if you ran if you are lucky enough to randomly get that mode in random battles great it'll, it'll do quite well in that or any situation when you can get close in but that's just not how high tier goes nowadays unfortunately now if this was a coal ship i would give it a seven because it's a free ship you can get it for free anyway so kudos um, but it's not. You gotta pay for it. There's also the argument that if you missed out on the, uh, tier 9 18-inch clubs, though the Masashi and the Georgia, you could get this, and you can get into games where you can bully tier 7 ships. I think that's, a matter of fact, <laughs> the game you're watching on screen is a tier 7 game. That's very true. If you want to bully tier 7 ships by being able to vibe check right through their nose, yeah, it, it, it'll do that. It does do that. It does that quite well. When you do get in those tier 9 top tiered games. But do remember that super ships are a thing now. And those are sucking tier 9s into their games all the time now. I had a 6 super ship game when I was playing for this video. If you guys don't understand misery. 6 super ships and a sub on, I on either side. that That's just pure pain. I didn't last that long in that game obviously for obvious reasons. But that did happen. So, the pros of the Sun Yat-sen are that it does have 457mm guns. It can overmatch 30mm of armor. You do get a 22 second reload time on these guns. Uh, the turret angles are decent. The armor's good. You do get the normal damage con instead of the uh, quick cooldown damage con. Of course, you know, that's a, that could be considered a, um, a con. But I myself consider it a pro because of how in demand damage con is now. You gotta use it to clear the submarine pin. You gotta use it to stop the fire and the flooding. And, you know, it, it's got that, that poor consumable needs a break. <laughs> you do get DFAA, which, you know, hey, it, it, it is welcome. And when it is running, the EA does do well. 
The cons are that, well, there's no Pan-Asian BB line, so it's not really acting as a trainer for anything. I'll, I guess you, if you want to train your light cruiser commanders on it, go ahead. Uh, you do have the, the alpha of 16-inch guns, actually less alpha than the 16-inch guns that the ship is based off of. The accuracy of the ship just isn't accurate enough, in my opinion, to warrant this being a, a, a six-gun sh battleship that has 18-inch guns that has less alpha than 16-inch guns. That just doesn't make any sense to me. If you're going to bonk the shells this hard down in terms of alpha damage, then they need to be much more consistent than what they are. And you do have a 19 kilometer, 19.7-kilometer uh, base range. Of course, you can take the module to get that out, but it, in my opinion... You really need to build into the DPM because of how the dispersion is on this ship. So, oh, and of course it is, you know, uh, it does cost $77 or 19,000 dubs. It is not a coal ship. It's not available for free. So you're spending a lot of money to get, in my opinion, a lot of frustration. If the meta swings back to more close-in engagements or if airship escort someone becomes like, every other game and random battles sure it'll do fine in that and i can see for tier 9 ranked or tier 9 clan battles this becoming a fairly useful ship but for random battles it's just not worth the 77 dollars in my opinion unless again you just really want to get into the tier 9 18 inch club if you missed out on that boat some time ago so guys that's my two cents on the sun yacht sin let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy make sure to drop a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel when we to 50,000 subscribers and i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you guys have a wonderful saturday wonderful weekend hope to catch you guys in the next one